So we can say, with the certainty of an artist, that we are dealing with two different people. With this, Professor Carlos Bezerra gives us his judgment as artist, academic, and student of human anatomy concerning the case of the two sister Lucys. The work of the Brazilian intellectual, artist, and professor is critical for the investigation into the identity and fate of Sister Lucy dos Santos of Fatima on account of his addition of a three-dimensional perspective to the scientific examination. The many forensic, scientific, and handwriting reports that have been received so far by Sister Lucy Truth have considered the vast pictorial and substantial handwriting evidence that is available from official sources. Professor Bezerra has brought this two-dimensional evidence to life with his astoundingly lifelike renditions of those, which he refers to as Sister Lucy I or Sister Lucy as she appeared in public prior to 1967 and Sister Lucy II as she first appeared at Fatima in 1967 and then when this now identifiable imposter was brought out again in 1982 and who continued to claim the persona of Sister Lucy, the internationally known seer of Fatima, until her death in 2005. With texture, line, close anatomical detail, Bezerra makes possible what we will never see in this life, the standing of these two very different women, next to each other, each expressing a totally different moral and spiritual atmosphere. This totally different moral and spiritual atmosphere is identical to the contrasting ones of New Church and the Holy Apostolic Church of all generations. Professor Bezerra has made an incalculable contribution to our investigation. All right. I'm going to demonstrate for you all, some evidence of what we're trying to point out in this video about Sister Lucy. So, here we have a photograph of Sister Lucy's mother and, on the right, we have a photograph of Sister Lucy taken in 1946, when she was at the Covida area. Back then, she was still a Dorothean. As per this photograph, we can check that Sister Lucy's aging process should follow her mother's aging process. There is a resemblance between her and her mother, and that is the reason why I've done these two images. 
because photographs give us only two dimensions, height and width. So I've made two 3D images, two clay sculptures of Sister Lucy. Let's call her Sister Lucy 1, and let's call the other one Sister Lucy 2. So, as for the sculpture, it will be easier for us to identify the points that, at first sight, are already evident in the photographs. But they will become even more evident by looking at the 3D images. As I said, Sister Lucy's aging process should have followed her mother's aging process. Look at the cheeks, very protuberant. Due to the aging process, the tendency was to have gained a flaccidity in the musculature and in the skin. So there should have been a slight downward projection on this facial musculature. And we can verify that Sister Lucy had quite thick lips. Both the superior and inferior lips. We can see it in this photograph as well. And we can see that she had a very particular musculature at the corner of her mouth. A protuberant musculature. Look. That's why she had a well-defined smile. But it curves upwards. As we can see, both in the image and in the sculpture I made. There's a detail in the chin that we can see. A small skeletal protuberance in the chin. It is reproduced here. A small skeletal shape and a retrognathic chin. And we can see her forehead. A smooth forehead. Simple curvature. By analyzing her profile view, we can see in this photograph that her chin was really retrognathic. You can see the nose line and the chin is very retrognathic. If we analyze the profile view we can also conclude that we have the same retrognathic chin in the sculpture. And we can see in the photograph the forehead's curvature. A simple curvature. As we can see here, and as we can see here in the photograph. Now, on the other hand, when we analyze Sister Lucy too, we can see a big difference. Firstly, the glasses are an element used to disguise and hide some things. The glasses have quite thick lenses that make the eyes look bigger, because, as we can see, Sister Lucy too had small eyes. And the glasses, due to the lenses, would make her eyes look bigger. Here we can see a very protuberant forehead, as we can see in the image as well and in her profile view too. There is a protuberant skeletal shape here that would not have occurred in Sister Lucy 1's aging process. It would not have changed. Look at her mother, for example. It would simply go downwards during the aging process. This musculature here would go more downwards. In a future video, I'll simulate this Sister Lucy's aging process. We can also verify that Sister Lucy 2's lips are totally thin. Both the superior and inferior lips are nearly inexistent. As we can see in this photograph and in this profile view. And her smile curves downwards. Not upwards. And this musculature, 
which is protuberant here, disappears here. It does not exist. Let's move to the chin. This one has a square shape. And here is a small round skeletal shape. Sister Lucy too has a square chin and the chin is quite prognathic. We can see in the profile view and also here. I'm zooming in for you to see the profile view of the image I made in the sculpture. So we can say, with the certainty of an artist, that we are dealing with two different people. The aging process, or even the process of tooth extraction, as we know that Sister Lucy had all of her teeth extracted, would not be enough to provoke this kind of modification both in the chin, the jaw, and in the facial muscles. Also, the aging process would not be responsible for the skeletal protuberance of the forehead. This does not happen when one gets old. So I believe that it can hereby be demonstrated more clearly what we have been talking about and affirming, Yes, we are dealing with two Sister Lucys. One of them is the Seer of Fatima, and the other one who came up in 1967 in a single appearance, when Pope Paul VI was in Fatima in 1967. It was when this Sister Lucy had first appeared. And then she disappears again and then she is going to reappear later with Pope John Paul II. So, I would like you all to observe this video carefully and pay attention to these differences. That's why I think I am the first one to make these 3D images in order to make it very clear that we are dealing with two people.